Hello everyone. Today we'll be solving Cambridge International ASN A level biology paper 4 A level structured question October November 2021 paper 41. Today we'll be solving from question number 1 to question number 5. Question number 1A. Figure 1.1 is a diagram of a kidney nephron and some of its blood vessels. So we can see A which is the efferent which is the efferent arteriole we can see B which is the efferent arteriole and then there is C which is Bowman's capsule or renal capsule D is proximal convoluted tubule or PCT E is loop of Henle and F is distal convoluted tubule or DCT. G is collecting duct. Now, with the reference to figure 1.1, complete table 1.1 using letters A to G. Each letter may be used once, more than once, or not at all. Efferent blood vessel. So definitely efferent blood vessel is B. Part of a nephron containing cells that respond to ADH. We know ADH uh, cells that respond to ADH are uh, collecting duct, so it will be G. Part of a nephron where podocyte cells are located. Podocyte cells are located in renal capsule, so it will be C. Part of nephron containing cells that are located in the medulla. So medulla, we know that uh, a loop of Henle is located in medulla. All right, so basically this region gets divided into two portion. The top portion is in cortex, all right, and the bottom portion is in medulla. So we can have the collecting duct in medulla or the loop of Henle. So, so uh, since it says part of the nephron, so we're going to say it is E, loop of Henley. Next question, part B. Describe and explain how the cells of the proximal convoluted tubule are adapted to carry out selective absorption. So proximal convoluted tubule contains microvilli. And uh, these microvilli cells, the membrane increases the surface area. That is needed for transporting, uh, that is needed for many transport proteins. Sodium ions and glucose and amino acids are co-transported into the cell from filtrate by transport protein. Sodium ions is pumped out of the cells into blood by active transport. Many mitochondria located in the cells give energy. Tight junction between them prevents the migration of the protein. Part C. Figure 1.2 shows the concentration of ADH in the blood at different percentage changes in water potential of the blood. Concentration of ADH in the blood slash arbitrary units. So we can see percentage change in water potential of the blood. All right. So we can see that as the concentration, as the concentration of ADH in the blood all right so as it is decreasing all right uh, we can uh, relate this particular thing as that as the percentage change in water potential increases the concentration of ADH decreases describe the trend shown in figure 1.2 so as the water potential of the blood increases all right concentration of ADH in the blood decreases at minus 20 the percentage of water potential of the blood concentration of ADH is 14.8 arbitrary unit, whereas at 0% concentration of ADH, so and at 0 percentage concentration of ADH is and at 0 percentage concentration of ADH is 
to arbitrary unit. Sometimes a person will have a low concentration of ADH in the blood even though there is a change in the water potential. Suggest so one effect on the circulatory system of a low concentration of ADH in the blood. The blood volume decreases, so blood pressure decreases. Question number 2a. Cotton, gossypium, hirsutum, and false flax. Camelina sativa are crop plants that are grown in different parts of the world. Rubisco activase is an enzyme in the stroma of fluoroplast that is needed to maintain the activity of a second enzyme, Rubisco. Scientists measure the activity of Rubisco activase in cotton and in false flax at a range of temperatures. Figure 2.1 shows the result. Rubisco activity in arbitrary units represented false flax and cotton. So we can see false flax. All right, Rubisco activity at lower temperature, false flax have higher, act, higher activity. All right, and Rubisco activity, activase activity, all right, in cotton at higher temperature, there is higher activity compared to that of false flax. With a reference to figure 2.1, compare the results obtained from the, obtained for cotton and false flax. All right, so to compare the result, we can see obviously the cotton rubisco, the cotton rubisco activase has a higher optimum temperature, all right, in which it has the highest activity. At higher temperature, it has highest activity. We can see that. All right, maximum activity in flux enzyme, all right, is higher. We can see even at lower temperature, the flux enzyme, active rubisco activase enzyme has a much higher activity. Cotton rubisco activase can work at higher temperature than flax, which we can see it is much stable even at higher temperature than flax. All right, whereas the flax it decreases in activity at higher temperature. Above 30 degrees Celsius, above cotton enzyme, all right, 30 degrees Celsius above cotton enzyme has higher activity than flask. We can see after 30 degrees Celsius, the cotton rubisco activase has a higher activity. Below 30 degrees Celsius, Flax enzyme has a higher activity. As you can see, below 30 degrees Celsius, the flax enzyme always had a higher activity. Activity of both enzyme increases. All right, we can see both enzyme, they're increasing, and then they're decreasing. Rubisco activase has same activity of 0 0.104, of 0 0.104, at 30 degrees Celsius. Part two, suggest reasons for the differences shown in figure 2.1. So definitely we can understand from this particular previous page graph that cottons are generally, all right, okay, this is the purpose crop for higher temperature. Cotton has and flask has different genes or alleles of rubisco activase, which are not similar. So as a result, different primary structure of the rubisco activase is produced in cotton versus flax. Different primary structure results in different tertiary structure of rubisco activase in cotton versus flax, which is why they are uh, you know, better active at different temperatures. Part B. Rubisco enzymes from cotton and false flax are active at temperatures up to 45 degrees Celsius and will denature at 45 degrees Celsius. Explain how the Calvin cycle is affected when Rubisco denatures. So when Rubisco denatures, no carbon dioxide can be fixed because Rubisco is the main enzyme that fixes carbon dioxide. As a result, glycerate phosphate is not produced and it is not converted into trilose phosphate. So no RUBP is regenerated in the process and no glucose is made as a result.
One goal of genetic engineering is to make crops that are heat tolerant. This means that crops can grow and produce a high yield of high yields at high temperature, high environmental temperature. Use the information in question number two to suggest and explain a way to improve tolerance of a crop to high temperature. So, you see, the gene for Rubisco activase can be taken from the cotton and inserted into strawberry embryo because we know strawberry are very sensitive to temperature. The Rubisco activase maintains the Rubisco action at high temperature above 37.5 degrees Celsius to 42.5 degrees Celsius, which we can see from the previous page. All right, and thereby they can maintain the rate of photosynthesis. Question number three, ecological surveys are conducted before conservation decisions are made. For example, surveys can be carried out before deciding whether to reintroduce a species to its former habitat. Outline how an ecological survey can measure the biodiversity of a terrestrial habitat. So basically what ecological survey can do is it can do random sampling technique. It can use frame quadrant to measure the vegetation Frame quadrant can be placed at random using random number generating app. The number of species within that particular quadrant can be recorded and the number of individual within the quadrant can be also recorded. This process can be repeated to find average and multiply with the particular area to find average to the find average estimate of the particular whole area. So that's how we can you know measure the biodiversity of a terrestrial habitat. Part B. Table 3.1 lists some mammal species that became extinct in Great Britain or were introduced into Great Britain in the last 12,400 years. The reason for this each extinction or introduction and the time for each event are shown. Arctic fox, number of years before present time, 12,400, event, extinction, reason, climate change. Sheep, Number of years before present time, 5,400. Event, introduction. Reason, farming. House mouse. Number of years before present time, 3,500. Introduction, it is accidental. And then Linux, it got extinction 1,500 years ago. All right, and the reason was hunting. Fallow deer, 900 years ago, it was present. All right, event, introduction. Reason was food. All right, okay. South American Koipu, 86. Introduction, and the reason is far. All right. South American Koipu, 33. Extinction, conservation, culling. With reference to Table 3.1, state and explain the factors that have had a negative impact on biodiversity in Britain. So, climate change due to global warming Arctic fox species are not well adapted to climate change. All right. So as we can see, because of that, they got extinct. Hunting caused extinction of the lynx. As we can see, the lynx got extinct because of hunting. All right. Introduction of, uh, in introduction of farming animals like sheep all right, introduction of farming animals like sheep decreases biodiversity as they can destroy food webs due to overgrazing. Introduced species also compete with native species as they might occupy the same niche. Part C. Non-governmental and government organization are working together to reintroduce a lynx population 
to its former habitat in a remote part of Great Britain. Linux are predatory big cats. Figure 3.1 shows a Linux. Suggest the factor that need to be considered by the organization to successfully reintroduce and restore a breeding population of Linux in Great Britain. So basically, the organization must consider, all right, uh, you know, uh, first of all, they need to obtain healthy, fertile, captively bred Linux. The organization also need to ensure that the genetic diversity in the introduced herd is maintained. The organization needs to consider if the area where they are, you know, introducing the Linux, it is a suitable habitat for that Linux. All right. And it contains sufficient amount of prey and available food that the Linux can consume naturally and survive. The organization also needs to organize public safety education and organize compensation for farmers who are going to, who may lose their livestock to this particular Linux. Organization can also lobby a lawmaker to outlaw the killing of Linux in that area so that their numbers are conserved. Organization should also monitor Linux and other prey population within that area so that they don't get overcrowded. Question number four. In 1984, the geneticist Alec Jaffreys invented a DNA testing technique known as DNA profiling that produces a DNA banding pattern on a gel. The DNA banding pattern profile is unique to each individual. DNA profiling can be used to police forensic work to catch an since 1987, police in many countries have collected and stored DNA from crime scenes to create DNA profiles, which they try to match with the DNA profiles of criminal suspects. DNA at a crime scene may be obtained from hairs and traces of blood, semen, and saliva. Explain why PCR may be needed before DNA from a crime scene can be profiled. Well, basically the understanding is very simple in a crime scene the dna may be present in very small quantity the pcr allows us to multiply that particular so the pcr allows the dna to be multiplied so that it can be tested explain why electrophoresis produces a dna banding pattern on a gel so the reason is very simple you see dna is negatively charged so it is attracted to the positive electrode now, since these DNA fragments, they have lighter fragments and uh, there are heavier fragments, so the lighter fragments can move longer distance, so they can form a banding pattern. Part B. GED Match is described as an open data personal genomics website. It can be used by people who want to upload their DNA data to trust their ancestors and other relatives. In 2018, police in the USA solved a large number of serious crimes. Some of these crimes had been unsolved for over 30 years. People used GED Match to profile DNA taken from crime scenes and to look for matching DNA profiles. In many cases, the police found partial matches to the relatives of criminals this allowed the criminals to be identified and then charged on the basis of the complete DNA profile match. Suggest why the police strategy of comparing crime scene DNA with GED match database was so successful. So basically, the GED match database is much larger than the police database. So police database only covers people, those who are suspected of crime. However, the GED match has data for innocent people, those who have no reason to hide their DNA. GED Match provides multiple leads to guilty people who are hiding their DNA. The next question. Explain why GED Match is an example of bioinformatics. GED Match database stores a large quantity of DNA data for analyzing and processing by using computer algorithms. So that's why it is considered as bioinformatics.
The first successful conviction resulting from the use of GED match by the police was widely reported. Some journalists and broadcasters thought that the GED match website should not have been used by the police in this way. In the days following the news, the number of citizens choosing to upload their DNA data to GED match increased from 1,500 to 5,000 a day. Comment on the social and ethical issues raised by this first successful conviction. So basically, common citizens, they want to help the police to imprison the criminals. This will make society safer. DNA breakthroughs help justice system. Sharing own data also shares relations data without their consent. So which is which makes it much easier for the police to find out the original criminal. Question number 5A. Gibberlin is a plant growth regulator involved in barley seed germination. Production of gibberlin is stimulated by the uptake of water. State the location of gibberlin synthesis in a barley seed during germination. So we know that gibberlin is produced in embryo. So embryo. Part B. Barley seeds germinate when placed on blotting absorbent paper that is soaked in water. The germination of barley seeds placed on blotting paper soaked in solution of different water potential was investigated. The success of germination was measured as germination index. Barley seeds placed on blotting paper soaked in water. Barley seeds placed on blotting paper soaked in five solutions of different water potential. The results are shown in figure 5.1. The higher the germination index value, the more successful germination of the barley seed. So we can see as the water potential becomes lower and lower, the rate of germination index also becomes lower. With reference to 5.1, describe the relationship between the germination index of barley seed and water potential. So we can also do a data code that at 0 megapascal, we had 46, uh, 46 germination index. And all right, at minus 2.25, at minus 2.25, we had uh, around uh, 4 uh, index germination index is only just four. Suggest explanation for the relationship shown in Figure five point one. So, I mean, it is understandable that a low water potential will decrease the water uptake of the seed, and we know that water is needed to activate the embryo and produce gibberellin. Water is also needed for the hydrolysis reaction within the uh, seed to convert starch to maltose. Water is also needed as a medium for reactions. Solutes that lower water potential can be toxic and inhibit the enzyme from functioning. Part C. During barley seed germination, Gibberellin stimulates the synthesis of enzymes. State the name of one of these enzymes and the precise location of its synthesis. So the enzyme is amylase and the location where it is synthesized is the aluron layer. Part D. Some plants are grown commercially for their flowers. Many of these plants are varieties that have short stems. Two factors that affect the height of stems are gibberellin, the capital LE and the small LE gene. The capital LE, small LE gene has two alleles, which are the capital LE and the small LE. So just an advantages of growing a short stemmed variety of flowering plant. A short stem variety of flowering plant will you know, use less amount of energy to make the fibrous part of the plant, which is the stem. So it can put more energy in producing more flowers and larger flowers. And they are less likely to be damaged by wind and heavy rain. Explain how the capital LE, small LE gene and gibberellin are involved in affecting the height of plant stems. So basically, the short plants are homozygous, small LE, small LE. Recessive alleles 
codes for non-functional enzyme. Non-functional enzyme gives inactive gibberellin. The Della proteins are not broken down, so the Della protein stays bound to the PIF, which is a transcription factor. The PIF cannot bind to the promoter of the gene that promote the growth. So guys, that's all for today's video. In our next video, we'll be solving from question number 6 to question number 10 for October, November 21, variant 41. Thank you guys for joining the video. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you are notified for when the next video comes up. If you want any of your question papers to be solved, upload it to us or contact us and then we'll basically uh, you know, solve and upload it for you. Thank you guys. See you later. Bye-bye.